Thank you. Um, welcome and really thanks for joining us for this session. I'm really excited to see there are still you know, so many people interested about to join this session at the very, as the very last session of the day. So looks like people are interested to know how to retain their customers, right? OK. So <clears throat> I'm Saurabh from IBM. And uh, with me, I have Aradhana from USF. So the, this work, what we are going to discuss today, it is a joint research work between IBM and University of South Florida. And this is our team. From USF side, there is uh, Kaushik Datta. Uh, along with him, Aradhana, who is in person here, and then her colleague, uh, Sai. From IBM side, I'm there. And uh, we also had Stacy from my team, uh, who is a senior data scientist. Uh, before jumping into the, the work, let us take a step back uh, to understand little bit about the social science behind this work. Uh, I, I don't know what everyone is expecting here, whether it would be too much of data science or too much of social science. Uh, we have a bit of everything. So let us start with the uh, personality models. Uh, so I think in the area of social science, understanding the personality was always a very interesting topic. Uh, there are various theories, starting from the psychoanalytic theory of Freud, where he says that everyone's psychology is based on the childhood memories, how people have interacted with them. Then there is neo-Freudian theory, which essentially says our personality is based on uh, the people who we interacted, interact with. And then the third one is this one, which is the Big Five model which essentially says our personality is all about how we interact with the environment. Now, this one is very popular, at least for the last two decades. Um, almost four or five different teams did separate research work, the social science experiments, independently. And eventually, they, they found that they are doing the same work. And sort of all the things got consolidated in these big five models. Uh, to me, it looks pretty intuitive. It is all about um, how cooperative I am when I'm working with others. It is all about uh, how, how dutiful, diligent I am when I'm doing some work. It is all about what is my uh, extrovertness, how much I like to work with others, how much social I am. It is all about how I am sensitive, or my emotions are sensitive to the uh, social behavior or uh, the environment. And also, it is all about how, how much curious I am, how much adventurous I am uh, to explore new things. Now, as I'm finding it very uh, intuitive, obviously, the marketing people, they were always very interested about figuring out how to attract customers and also how to retain them based on the personality traits. And they adopted these models quite a bit in the prior research works. Uh, in, so there are, there are actually plenty of work has happened in this area. The, the works, what we have based our research work on are two most recent works, we'll say. Uh, one of the reasons, since they are recent, they already sort of covered the previous work, and they are further trying to draw corollary out of them. And these two works are pretty interesting in a way that the approaches they follow are very different. So the first one, it is from uh, a retail industry. Uh, they essentially trying to correlate those big five model personality trait uh, to the customer satisfaction and loyalty through a meta layer of customer empowerment. And they used a sample set of all the retail customers across the world. And eventually, they figured out, or their, their results said that 
the loyalty actually depends or guided by the factors of agreeableness and the conscientiousness. The second work, they actually try to relate the personality trait with the brand identification, like how I relate with a brand as a personality, and then finally they roll it up to the brand loyalty level. Though they did it at the, for the automobile area, um, again, customers for a particular brand, not across multiple brands, but eventually their conclusion was also pretty much similar. They found that, okay, the, especially the conscientiousness and the extroversion, these are the two personality traits, what they found, uh, which essentially dictates the customer loyalty. Now, in both of these two approaches, uh, the, the main problem what we see, and probably all of you agree with me here, is that these approaches are very time-consuming since they're survey-based. They also mean a lot of money because it takes really effort to do the survey, compile the results, and all these things. And finally, if you see the sample set used, they're really too minuscule, right? Come on, we are in the era of big data, and a model is built using 150 data points, 270 data points. So there is surely a way to make these things much, much better using data science, big data, AI, right? So that was our idea, and we started with that idea that can we at least replicate something very similar using the data science techniques? However, we sort of digressed by the base, from the basic hypothesis, what they had in the prior works. In our hypothesis, we sort of started with the idea that the personality is so innate to an individual, it would always contribute to some level of customer loyalty, irrespective of the brand or product, but obviously with variable degree. Given that hypothesis, our approach was use data sets across multiple brands, and we used the online retailer's data for that, and then ver verify the findings maybe across multiple product groups so that we can see what is the similarity, whether this, we get the same results across, across multiple product groups. And thirdly, obviously, we use the data science techniques to see if we can get the same result or similar result uh, at much lesser time, money, and obviously we can produce much reliable model because we use lots of data, or we can use lots of data. Now with that, I will hand it over to Aradhana, which, uh, who will take you guys through the details of this model. Thank you so much, Aurav. Uh, so everyone does have a good history of how we got motivated towards this idea. And now I'll be talking about uh, how we further conducted our analysis. So, talking about our data set. So, uh, the papers that are cited below, these are the papers uh, based upon what we collected the uh, data. This data is uh, basically uh, an online retailer data and comprises of uh, majorly the reviews data set and the ratings data set. Uh, we have basically picked uh, five of the categories. There are multiple more, but uh, we chose these five because uh, these basically had the largest volume of data available. Uh, so these being electronics, books, grocery, pet supplies, and baby products. So furthermore, talking about the key attributes that were uh, used uh, for reviews, we use the customer ID, product ID, and the review text. So review text was uh, basically the heart of everything in our case, uh, because uh, this text was basically processed further using the Watson API, and uh, this basically indicated a customer's uh, personality traits. 
towards a particular brand and what are, what are the key indicators of a person that can indicate furthermore uh, a loyalty towards a brand. And coming on to the rating side, uh, we have customer ID, product ID and ratings. So ratings was uh, one of the thing that was uh, used and ratings, we basically thought that uh, ratings uh, can signify a customer's uh, satisfaction towards a brand and satisfaction can uh, implicitly relate to uh, being a very loyal customer and that is how we build up the picture. So talking about the technology stack that we used, uh, majorly the Watson API was uh, the major uh, technology that was used and this basically uh, is a model that is uh, already trained and uh, we basically used it to derive the big, big five traits that Saurabh has talked about. And we also used uh, Watson Studio as a developer friendly environment because this, uh, seeing the size of our team, it was very nice to uh, like, work on a particular notebook or access any data set in a collaborative way. It was a good framework to work on. And uh, we used the REST data source. This, this was an open source uh, uh, available at GitHub. And uh, we basically used it uh, to uh, call like in a distributed fashion using Spark. We were able to call uh, the Watson API using different set of inputs, uh, multiple uh, parallel threads, and finally we were able to collect it all together in a single data frame. Again, it was uh, very easier for a, de for a developer point of view to access these data frames, uh, perform some uh, SQL-like uh, queries on top of it, so it was a very uh, good uh, package that we used upon. And we used Python as our programming language and we used PySpark for our random forest algorithm implementation that we'll uh, take through. So diving deep in our model. Uh, we started with all of our text collected all together and passed it into the Watson API. And this gave us the big five traits these big five traits were furthermore validated with two different uh, things. One being the Pearson coefficients that basically gave an importance of whether these, uh, out of these five uh, traits, which are really uh, good indicators towards uh, the average rating that is being used for loyalty. And next one was the random forest implementation. We used it. Uh, for the feature importance. And this again gave us uh, some result of out of the five, which are the ones that are uh, most important features to indicate the loyalty. And so comes our findings. So here we have our findings again uh, divided into two parts as we talked about uh, in the building of a model where uh, our findings are basically one with the Pearson coefficients and the other with the random forest feature importance. So here we, we can see in the Pearson coefficient uh, results, across all of these five product types, we can see that uh, the consciousness, agreeableness, and extroversion are on the higher side, whereas the other two being emotional range and openness are on the lower end. This basically has a striking similarity with the paper uh, the results that were drawn from there were also similar like consciousness, extroversion and uh, agreeableness to be on the uh, key indicators of loyalty and we, we found similar uh, things over here as well and our uh, threshold being 0 0.25 over here. Similarly, uh, we have our results for various, uh, like for the five different product types that were used using random forest feature importance. And in this case as well, we took 0.2 uh, as our threshold because 
everything adds up to one in, in this case for feature importance. And so we use 0.2 and uh, these are the results. And again, this uh, basically gives you similar results with the paper as well as the ones with the Pearson coefficients. Okay, so that being suggested, uh, now we'll be talking about the suggested uh, approach to, uh, with, with the work that we have done, how can our work uh, solve a business use case? And first business use case would be uh, how we can uh, uh, serve in a way for the existing customers. So here, uh, you can see that in the data source, we can have a lot of text data. It could be either reviews or comments by existing customers. It can also be uh, emails or any source of text, textual information that one can get from the existing customers. That can be pulled into the Spark environment, uh, into data frames. And furthermore, the next step would be merging which would be like for a particular customer, the all the reviews for a particular customer and for a particular product type will be aggregated all, all together. And then we'll have some data wrangling uh, done on it, which will further will, uh, give you a prepared text. And this prepared text would be the input to calling the Watson API. And this is our Watson API, and we will be giving the prepared text in here, and this generates the big five traits. Furthermore, with those big five traits, like I said, we, will be, we can uh, have the important personality traits to be determined using any type of algorithms. In our case, we used random forest. And this, again, can relate to creating a loyalty index. This loyalty index, uh, with this loyalty index, we will have a loyal customer base, and this loyal customer base can be used throughout in any kind of applications, and it can be a good be a beneficial thing for uh, many applications across everywhere, which kind of uh, deals with a lot of textual data. Next, we have a use case for the new customers. So this architecture is quite similar to the one we uh, saw previously. But in this case, we can think of a story wherein I am a new customer and I go to this particular website and I start chatting with one of the uh, chatbot or any, any person on the other end, maybe a customer uh, service department or something, and I start querying about things that I want to know, things that I want to invest in for that particular online portal. In that case, what, what, what our work can do is, you can kind of uh, start chatting, and that chats, again, being the textual data, can be mapped to the uh, work that we have done using Spark Streaming, and with that, you can on the fly get the results, get the personality traits, get the glimpse of how the person really is, whether he or she can be a loyal customer or not. And that thing can be returned back to the customer service executive who is basically trying to uh, deal with the customer. And this particular thing can also uh, be a good use case to identify whether the new customer is really a new customer. So that being said, there is a quick demo that I have uh, prepared. And um, sorry for the, <laughs> OK. Just browse to the other. Okay, so uh, this is the Watson Studio that I had talked about, and uh, here we do have, um, this is the project that we created, multiple notebooks being maintained, the, uh, the data assets comprises of the ratings and reviews data set that we have, and there is a, 
there's a small notebook that I had prepared, uh, which is uh, kind of summarizing the main components of the data uh, of the parts that we've developed. And so here we are. So we started off with the data modeling, data loading, and we, in this case, we are using the book data set as an example. And so this is basically the reviews data set that I talked about, which has a reviewer ID, text, and product category. Now this product category is what we've tagged uh, manually uh, because all the reviews data set was like, uh, like there were different data sets for each and every category, so we kind of tagged it. And we further merged all the reviews per customer, per product type. And so here is a small example that one can see. For so-and-so reviewer ID, for category book, these are the set of reviews that we've collected and aggregated it all together. So this basically gives you a pre prepared text for the IBM uh, Watson API. So here is what we've used to call the Watson API. This is uh, the REST data source uh, package that we talked about. And in that, we, we have certain parameters that can be tuned. And so we basically had partitions as 10, and we increased the connection timeout and all of that. And with that, we finally get this. So here we have uh, the names. These are the big five traits, openness, consciousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and emotional range, and the, their respective percentile. And so with that being said, we went to the feature engineering part, wherein we now brought in the average rating into the picture. We aggregated the average rating uh, with the data, so finally, we have our final data looks like all the big five as well as the average rating. With that, now we can furthermore go to the random forest algorithm and say, okay, which are the ones which will be uh, the best for uh, determining the average rating? And so with the random forest, what we get is, uh, in the end, we can see over here, these are the important features. All of them add up to one, and so we finally see that, okay, in this case, say 0.4 is the highest, which means the consciousness is pretty high. So this is like the importance of consciousness across other five attributes. So that uh, completes my demo, and we are open for Q&A. Thank you.